Police officers of Reddit, what criminal actually impressed you with their criminal skills? We get a call reporting that the phone system of a major UK bank has been hacked and that the caller has had several thousand pounds stolen from their account as a result. Seems unlikely, but officers went round to see what had happened. Obviously the bank's system was fine, but scammers had done something fairly clever. Turns out that there is a way in the UK of keeping a phone line open when only the recipient hangs up. The scammers called the victim and pretended to be from the bank, before asking for account details. Victim was suspicious so hung up and called the bank back at their real telephone number. However, the scammers held the line open and played a dial tone down the line so the victim thought that she was making a new call, then they played a ring ring sample before a new scammer answered the call and took the details pretending to be the bank. I've heard of it a few times since in the press, but the first time I came across it was on duty and no one had any idea what was going on. Once had a guy who shoplifted on an industrial scale. He stole hundreds and sometimes thousands of pounds worth of merchandise from a particular well-known high street clothing store. Every day. He'd go to different branches all over the country, UK obviously, he spoke nicely and was smartly dressed. He just used to fill up bags with high-value products and walk out. He had a warehouse-type unit somewhere, police never found it, with his own till, because he would generate till receipts for these items and go back to return them, at a different branch, and get cash refunds. He was at it for years, made enough to put his kids through private school. When he got caught he was jailed for about a year, our shoplifting sentencing guidelines are absurdly low. When he came out he got back on it. Police still couldn't find his base. He was being investigated and was on bail. One occasion when he answered his bail at the police station, the police had a six-man surveillance team ready to tell him and track down the warehouse he was using. He lost them within two minutes of leaving the station. When he came for trial based on the CCTV evidence we had from the various shops the case got thrown out. The footage wasn't good enough to make out his features exactly and the officer who purported to identify him hadn't followed procedures, after he was thus acquitted he was due to be investigated for some other matters, but he gave the police and security the slip from the court before he could be arrested. Even I was impressed, and I was prosecuting him. I am a police officer, but the story is actually from my dad who was a lawyer. He had a couple of guys who had scratch built. An ATM. This would have been back in the 80s before the days of skimmers and cameras to clone cards, so they built their own ATM. And installed it in a wall on a public street. In order to collect card details to use later on. I don't know if it actually dispensed money, I'm guessing it just showed an error message. He told me that very occasionally he had come across criminals who had worked so hard for the spoils that he felt they had kind of earned them. These guys were his example. He was also confused that two people smart enough to do this chose not to make an honest living. I was an MP at Fort Carson. The young man was in the service for two years before a dishonorable discharge sending him back home to Pennsylvania. When he got home he used his uniform to get discounts and praise. One day he decided to hop on a plane to Colorado. He arrives in full uniform but with lieutenant. Rank on. Gets off the plane and uses the government transportation to get on base. He doesn't have an ID but shit he is an officer so they let him on. Then he stayed at the in-processing barracks without paperwork because hell, he is an officer. Stays there for weeks. He goes walking to the PX and comes across a woman with a flat tire. He helps her change it out and she invites him over for dinner. There he meets her husband and their kids then convinces them that he is waiting for housing and they let him live with them for a month. He cleans the house and babysits the kids. One time he went to this guy's unit and chewed a supply sergeant out to help the guy he was living with. The only reason this came to light is because of one phone call he made to his mother from the in-processing barracks. She became worried about him and called them. His mother let the people know he was not in the military. After that the search began. I was in MPI and got to pick him up. He gave me a straightforward statement and was genuinely nice. I just remember sitting on the office couch with him watching TV waiting for him to get transferred from my custody. I told him that I was genuinely impressed and that after whatever happens to him, happens, that he could get it together and do well. He wasn't the brightest kid but damn he had balls. I guess that is what it really takes. This guy in high school, we'll call him Lewis, was a known drug dealer. He didn't make it a secret. 
Everyone bought weed and harder stuff off of him. The cops constantly pulled him over to search him, and whenever a drug-related thing happened at school he was often the first kid they pulled into the principal's office. But they would never catch him with any drugs. The principal used to turn all of his possessions inside out on a weekly basis. Apparently schools can do that, but cops can't. They regularly cut locks off his gym locker and his regular locker in hopes of finding his stash, but they never found it. One time there was a rumor going around that his stash was stored in a locker not assigned to anyone, which prompted the administration to search every single locker in the school. I remember we had to stand in the hallway and unlock it so the principal could have a look inside. They definitely caught people with drugs but not the Lewis. Turns out he started that rumor. Drug dogs were a regular occurrence. Once a month they brought them into the school, and they were present at every sports game. Lewis was one of the only, if not the sole supplier for the whole school. The administration had no idea what to do. They would catch kids with weed and the kids would flat out say, I bought this from Lewis. Lewis would encourage them to say it. They would then flip Lewis shit inside out, cops would search his car, and he consented to all of it, and laughed when they found nothing. This was probably close to 15 years ago now. The vice principal loves to tell the story about how they eventually caught him. VP's younger son asked for these shoes for Christmas that had a secret compartment in them. Light bulbs go off in his head. The first day back after holiday break, he calls the school's dare officer and pulls Lewis out of class. They bring him into to office and flip all of his shit out on the table. Then the VP tells him to take his shoes off. Turns out his hunch was right. He had hidden compartments in his shoes. But there were no drugs in there. I guess Lewis is laughing his ass off at this point. This was pre-everyone owned a cell phone era. Lewis has the audacity to explain that he hasn't seen any of his classmates for three weeks, he had not taken any orders yet. Had the VP waited a day, he would have caught him. Edit, a lot of people want to know what happened to Lewis. From what I can recall, he had been arrested a few times on small charges, cleaned his act up, had two kids, got married, and is now GM of the most profitable Taco Bell on the East Coast. Sounds almost like Luis was actually acting as a distraction for the person who actually sold drugs to the school. Had a guy when I first started would twist locks. The art of twisting a lock works mainly in businesses that secure their double front doors using a deadbolt style lock. He would use a tool to twist this lock and in turn, open the doors. Guy probably got away with 25 businesses before he was finally busted. He later said his style of breaking and entering worked so well because the alarm systems have a set delay when opening a business. Say 30 seconds. Given the glass wasn't broke or large movements were observed by the system, it would act as if the store were opening and give the employee time to reset the alarm. Those 30s were plenty for him to get in, get to the register, and leave. A fire marshal once told me about his nemesis, a firebug naturally. Apparently the arsonist had a thing for burning old barns. Never a building that was in use, always an old abandoned one. Anyway, his modus operandi was to take a balloon filled with accelerant like gasoline or kerosene and suspend it by a string it 20 feet plus off the ground. Under the balloon he'd light a candle and start the balloon swinging on a long arc. He'd have a good 20 plus minutes before the arc of the swing slowed enough that the candle would ignite the balloon. The balloon ignites, the accelerant is spread evenly across all surfaces and the balloon, string and candle disappear in the fire. It was like the entire interior of the structure caught fire at the same time, with no trace as to how. He said it was damn near the perfect crime, until some cop happens to notice a car parked in a field a mile away and thinks to jot down the license plate number. I locked up a guy a few years ago and he had an unusual crime on his criminal history. Theft of an ATM. I asked him about it and he told me he was with four others and they all turned up at a local bank in overalls with a large truck. They asked for the manager and told him, we're here to repair the ATM. The manager helped them load the ATM onto the truck full of cash and they drove away. He got snapped when his girlfriend got mad and turned him in. Haha <laughs> my dad almost got caught stealing expensive paintings midday, 30 years ago. He was taking them off the wall, loading them in his car. Two cops came up, and one grabbed his arm. What do you think you're doing, what does it look like I am doing? I am loading these up to put new ones up, the cops looked at each other with suspicion, and he feared he was about to be bagged. So he turned and said, well, are you two just gonna fucking stand there, or are you gonna fucking help me? The cops went in and grabbed all the paintings and loaded them in his car with him. Haha. <laughs> 
Edit, he dropped them off about 10 years later anonymously, but kept one. It's hanging in a friend's house. Edit, they weren't from a gallery, but an upscale club, lounge. Sorry if that ruins it. They probably only were worth a few thousand, still nothing to sneeze at. Smartest criminal, suspect would go door to door saying he was with Publishers Clearing House. He would tell people they were one of several finalists. He then explained he would need their name, date of birth, and social security number to verify who they were. After that, he would ask what hours they weren't home so they could ensure if the victim won the prize, they would be home. Naturally, he would break into their homes when they weren't home and steal all their valuables. To top it off, he would steal their identity and open a bunch of credit card, payday loans in their names afterwards. After over 50 cases, I finally caught the guy. Made off with over a half million dollars in three months before he was caught. Dumbest criminal, suspect was robbing a gas station late at night. Suspect pointed a gun at the cashier demanding money. The cashier was surrounded by plexiglass all around. Cashier refused to give suspect the money and hit the panic alarm, which locked the door. Suspect was angry and fired a shot at the cashier. The bullet ricocheted off the plexiglass and struck him in the forehead. The bullet knocked him unconscious but didn't penetrate the skull. As I arrived, the bullet was still protruding from his forehead and he was knocked out. He got 99 years for his stupidity. The best part was the cash register only had $60 in it. Not a cop, nor the criminal, but in the Blue Mountains of NSW, Australia, my now-deceased uncle went on a string of armed robberies where he would run into a store with a gun, then shove the attendant against the wall and superglue their hands to the wall before stealing the money in the cash register. He had no intentions of using the gun, and it was actually never loaded. He just thought it would be funny to glue people to the wall and steal their shit. Is it an Australian thing to have a paradoxically smart and stupid uncle? In the 80s or 90s the laws around using guns, weapons and armed robberies were altered to make the sentencing harsher, so my uncle decided using a gun wasn't worth it but didn't want to have to mug people without a weapon. So my uncle gets creative and does what he is good at doing, making DIY weapons, a skill he used to his advantage in jail, many, many times. He goes down to the grocery store and buys bars of soap, shoe polish and paint sealer. Spends the next few weeks using his bong lighter and altered blowtorch to melt the soap into mounds and molds them into shape and uses a mix of paint, shoe polish and paint sealer to make the look like handguns. Apparently he isn't the best at hand crafting, but he only mugged people at night anyway, so it worked for a few months. The cops searched his house in bulletproof vests to find the gun half melted in the kitchen. Apparently the judge laughed at him and mentioned he had never encountered an individual who managed to terrorize a community with a bar of soap. He went to jail, but not for long, so win-win. Although no skill was really involved, I arrested a kid for stealing a car. He confessed and told me that he'd be straight up with me. He was walking through a parking lot and saw a lady drop her car keys and keep walking. He said that's her fault for not paying attention, grabbed the keys, and took off in her car. He lamented that he knew he'd get stopped eventually, but didn't think we'd stop him so quickly. When I asked if he had a driver's license he smiled and said he was planning to take the car he stole to the DMV so he could take his driving test. We both had a good laugh at that. He said I ruined his plans. No criminal skill per se but I thought I'd contribute this story as it was quite impressive. Used to work with law enforcement and during a Friday night a guy on PCP managed to shut down a major roadway during a foot pursuit. This guy ended up taking several shots from a 9mm and a shotgun shell and then wriggled out of the grasp of several officers trying to subdue him and get into a police car and drive off with it. He only managed to get about 10 feet before crashing into a cement barrier and knocking himself unconscious. The guy ended up living too. PCP is a hell of a drug. Saw this one on one of those police chase shows. Police dash cam showed the car in front of him was swerving all over the road in the middle of the night. He followed him for a while, then flipped on the lights to pull him over. Guy pulls over, and before the cop can do anything, he turns off the car, gets out, throws his keys into the woods, cracks open a brand new fifth of vodka, and chugs the whole thing down. 
Cut to the interview of the actual criminal with his voice and face obscured. He said he had already had multiple DUIs and had become something of an expert on drunk driving laws. He took advantage of a loophole wherein the cop didn't have time to see if he was actually drunk behind the wheel of the car. Chugging the vodka right there would immediately have an effect on any sobriety testing. He hadn't opened the vodka in the car, so no open container infraction. And he made sure his keys were most definitely out of reach, so there was now way that he could be operating a vehicle under the influence, didn't know whether or not to be impressed or disgusted with his drunken ingenuity.